Hi everyone, today is Wednesday, November 19th, 2019. I just got off at 28th Street on the R train and today I'm going to take you on a walk of the Flatiron District. The time is 4.45 p.m., 34 degrees Fahrenheit, 1 degrees Celsius. So pretty cold out here. In this video, I'll cover some things such as Madison Square Park, the Flatiron Building, as well as Ladies Mile. A lot of people around here doing a lot of moving around. And Where I just passed 28th Street between Broadway and 7th Avenue is known as the Flower District. You can go there and get some many different kinds of plants there, flowers and trees and like things of all kinds. That's where all the um, gardening stuff happens in the city. If you go there in the morning, it will seem like it's a forest. That's how much different it is than the, the other blocks in the city. Also this part of Broadway where I am right now, I kind of like to give it the nickname Ho uh, Hotel Alley because of all the hotels that are being constructed. There's one here called the Broadway Plaza Hotel. There's this one. And then there's other ones further uptown. But it wasn't always like this. This area uh, was depressed for a long time. The Flatiron District. The original name of this area was called Madison Square. It wasn't until after the Flatiron Building was created that the name Flatiron District came into effect because the name came after the building. But I'll talk a little bit more about that as I get closer. If you need something warm to drink, there's Starbucks coffee across the street as well as an interesting wine bar there. I also cover this area a little bit during my narrated walk of Broadway. It's also a cafe here, Cafe e Cucina. Okay, now I've approached 25th Street, so I think I can start talking about the history of this area now. So this area, Madison Square, was originally swampy land. It wasn't really good for construction, so they used it as potter's fields in the 1700s and early 1800s. The potter's field is where people would bury their dead if they couldn't afford to bury them elsewhere. So this is what this land was for. But uh, through the commissioner's plan of 1811, the city needed to expand northward. Before then, there were plans to come up here and there was a retreat for the wealthy. They built homes around here and residences and there were several restaurants around the area as well. This is a pedestrian plaza, it says do not enter. There is a famous cottage over here from 5th Avenue and 23rd Street, which is a little bit further down, called the William Corporal Thompson Cottage. He, named, he later named it Madison College uh, Cottage after the former president of the United States, James Madison, the fourth president of the United States. Here's the second oldest monument in New York City, the Wharf Monument in 1857. There's the Flatiron Building in front of me. Originally it's called the Fuller Building. 
But before there wasn't, there was even a Fuller building, there was a person who owned the building. The site of it was called um, the Enos uh, Flatiron. His name was Amos Eno. There was a hotel directly across from it called the Fifth Avenue Hotel. And that was eventually torn down and he built a seven-story apartment building on it called the Cumberland. And it was a very awkward building to, uh, I mean, very awkward plot of land to build on because it was a very irregular shaped plot of land. So Amos, what he did was he used the first electric billboards on the area for advertising. So Times Square wasn't the first area that had electric advertising. It was here in the Flatiron District. But eventually the land was passed through after he died and eventually made their hands in the way of the Fuller Corporation, which was a known architectural firm known for building a lot of unique designs. And this area uh, was built up. The Flatiron Building was originally called the Fuller Building, like I said. It was completed in 1902, but immediately it was uh, faced with a lot of criticism. People hated the design. It was also known as a very windy area, something that you can kind of sense right now because uh, the irregularly shaped body makes it very, very difficult for the winds to go across. And famously, there have been a lot of movies where people's hats will fly off or women's skirts will fly up because of the wind. And there's actually a very interesting court case where they made it illegal for men to stand here more than two minutes <laughs> if they were looking at the flat iron building. Anything less was okay, but women could stay as long as they wanted because they wanted to prevent people from looking at women's skirts. And here's a nice breeze of wind right now. But anyway, the flat iron building opened. It was one of the tallest skyscrapers in the world at the time, but not the tallest. The tallest was actually this building right here, completed in 1909. That's the Metropolitan Life Clock Tower. But it was surpassed by the Woolworth Building in Lower Manhattan shortly after, I believe in 1913. But let's walk over into Madison Square Park. Right there is the Empire State Building, colored in red and green tonight. So Madison Square Park was here for a long time. It was public land for much of its history. And it's actually shaped very similarly to what it was back then. Of course, there weren't art installations back then and there was no Shake Shack in the middle of the park here, but it did have its nice um, areas. Here's actually a war monument. Recently, there's flowers placed here because Veterans Day was this past Monday. So only two days ago. But well, here's Madison uh, Square Park. I'm gonna walk over here and show you the site of the first Shake Shack. So Shake Shack is a uh, nationally uh, known food, uh, fast food restaurant. Originally, it started as a hot dog stand, but it proved to be very popular. So they started selling other food items. And when that got too popular, they had to expand their business even more. Hence the evol evolution of Shake Shack. So this is the first ever Shake Shack location right here. Here's the Madison Square Fountain. If you're ever lost here, you can always ask someone to meet you at the fountain and they'll know exactly where you are in Madison Square Park. Although I wouldn't recommend it right now because it's so cold, you probably want to meet somebody inside.
this gigantic building here at the southern end of Madison Avenue. This is the starting point at Madison Square Park. It is one Madison. It hosts many luxury condominiums. This street, 23rd Street, is one of the most important crosstown streets. It has two, um, two directions of travel, eastbound and westbound. Here at the MetLife Clock Tower building now is home to Charles Schwab on the retail, um, first floor retail side. MetLife I don't think is in this building anymore. They moved to the Pan Am building near Grand Central when that was completed. Now that one's called the MetLife building, but this clock tower here still remains and is very iconic. Now this here, I wouldn't recommend you using unless you really have to. It's a pay-per-use toilet, only costs a quarter, but they only give you a 15-minute time limit, and if you don't come out before the 15 minutes is up, the door automatically opens on you. I did several videos inside that toilet, which was pretty funny because I voice acted some of it. It doesn't even have uh, soap and sometimes the toilet paper you press the button it only gives you like three sheets of toilet paper so i don't think it's worth going there unless you have to i'd much rather go into one of these local businesses here like italy or starbucks for a restroom here you see a connecting bridge between the metlife clock tower building and this building over here which may be also uh, a MetLife building as well. But I'll show you the site of the original Madison Square Garden and also the second version of Madison Square Garden. So Madison Square Garden currently sits at 33rd Street between 7th and 8th Avenues and also between 31st and 33rd Streets. It's nicknamed the world's most famous arena and hosts the New York Islanders hockey team and the New York Knicks as well as many concert uh, venues. But its original home was here in Madison Square Park. And I'm going to walk to that location right now. It's at the corner of 26th Street and Madison Avenue. That's where the original Madison Square Garden was. So here it is. This building now is the New York Life Insurance Building. They still occupy the building right now. But back in 1879, that's when the first Madison Square Garden was opened on this location. It was actually a outdoor arena, so it wasn't very convenient for the summertime when things would get very hot inside and also during the winter. And famously, there was a show one time where there was like five feet of slow, an absolute blizzard, and only 200 people showed up when the capacity was only like 10,000 people. But the show still went on. So that didn't fare too well for Madison Square Garden, but regardless, it was an area for the rich to come out and watch horses race and uh, bicycle riders come but the original Madison Square Garden was torn down the second version was created in 1890 that one was actually a covered arena but that didn't uh, fare too popular and it was only in 1925 that Madison Square Garden was moved uptown to 8th Avenue and 50th Street 
The second Madison Square Garden was designed by the famous architect Stanford White. He created many different buildings. One of his most famous creations is the Washington Square Arch. He was famously murdered on top of the Madison Square Garden that he helped design and create by a very jealous, jealous um, person who married one of his uh, ex-dates, I should say. Her name was Evelyn something, I forgot. I need to look it up. Evelyn Nesbitt was made public by many, many newspapers at the time. It was a very blatant murder, but that's what happened with Stanford White, the famous architect. But what I'm going to do right now is walk down Fifth Avenue for a little bit. No, actually, I'll walk down Broadway and then go down 20th Street. I'll show you the birthplace of Theodore Roosevelt, former president of the United States. This here is a museum which I haven't explored yet, Mole Math. It's a museum dedicated to mathematics. There's actually very strange museums in New York City. One of the strangest museums is in Chinatown in Cortland Alley. It's only open during certain days and it's only like in the space of a garage. It's called MMMM Museum. I don't know how many M's are in there, but that's the actual name of the museum. Okay, I'm back on Fifth Avenue slash Broadway. This is the intersection. One thing too that I forgot to mention about the Flatiron Building is that a lot of people didn't like it because from every angle that you view the Flatiron Building at, it looks slightly different. If you look at it straight on, it seems like you're being pulled into it. And then if you look at it from the side, it looks like two-dimensional. So that's a optical illusion that the Flatiron Building creates. Currently, there's scaffolding on it, so I don't know when, um, how long that's going to be up. But there's a reason for the scaffolding, because an Italian uh, hotel luxury firm bought the building, I believe, in 2009. And I think they have plans to create a hotel there. So maybe one day you'll be able to book a hotel in the Flatiron Building. But it was originally office space. I think they do intend to keep some office space in the Flatiron Building. So we'll see what happens there. It is getting dark very quickly in New York right now. This is all due to the daylight savings time that happened not too long ago. If you want some great food around here, I recommend you, you check uh, Fifth Avenue and 24th Street. Between 24th and 23rd Street, there's a Italian, um, Italian supermarket and I should say like food hall and supermarket all in one called Italy. You can get great Italian dishes there and do a lot of shopping. There's also a uh, stall here for Italy in the Flatiron Square directly in front of the Flatiron Building. So I'm going to walk over to uh, the birthplace of Theodore Roosevelt and then continue back the other way to 6th Avenue and show you some of the 
historic buildings that are part of Ladies Mile that was very famous for its shopping areas and department stores. This is one of my favorite talking crosswalks in the whole city. That one announces that the walk sign is on the cross Broadway and this one announces that the walk sign is on the cross 23rd Street. So here you see the flat iron building from the side. As you can see, it looks two dimensional from here. And the flat iron building looks completely different depending on the time of day you take a picture of it as well. Sometimes you get that early morning light directly on the point and that makes for a great picture. And then late in the day, you get all the different shadows. Here's 22nd Street. Historically, this is the beginning of Ladies Mile. The flat iron building is located on the northern end. And also the Flatiron Building is located on the south end of the Madison Square neighborhood, historic Madison Square neighborhood. But this entire neighborhood is called Flatiron now. All these neighborhoods are synonymous with each other. They were called certain names at different points in time. That's why you may see them being used still. But Flatiron District goes all the way to um, Union Square, which is near 14th Street. But the Flatiron District was very depressed for a long time. It wasn't until the mid-90s that this area became redeveloped because you had the big developments and skyscrapers of the financial district. Everybody wanted to do work down there and have business. And then Midtown past 34th Street and around that area all the way up to 59th Street became developed. So all of the business activity there was going on. And this was kind of like a dead zone where there wasn't too much activity going on. But that all changed in the 90s when Madison Square Park was cleaned up. And with the cleaning up of that public park, more businesses started moving in. why I wear a padded backpack so someone bumps into me hopefully my camera equipment isn't damaged Coming home now. people are really bundled up here for this cold cold weather we haven't seen this cold weather in New York City for a while not until the last season anyway Usually it doesn't get this cold until after Thanksgiving. Really cool store I want you to check out if you have time is the Flying Tiger Copenhagen. It has a lot of discounted items and neat things for sale. Here you can see some of the historic ladies mile buildings here. A lot of the architecture is European. This uh, building here 
I think it may have been a department store at one time. It probably was. You can see the um, architecture there. Now it's the home to Brooks Brothers um, something. So there's still clothing stores that do business here in the former uh, Ladies Mile buildings. Many of these buildings are landmarked. The main area of Ladies Mile is on 6th Avenue though. So I'm going to show you the home of Theodore Roosevelt right down this block, a short walk from here. Oh. UPS van wasn't looking for reversing. That's why you have to keep your eyes on your head and not down on your phone when crossing the street. <coughs> so you immediately see the American flag at, top, at the top. This is the home of Theodore Roosevelt. In fact, the original building was demolished, but the uh, building that replaced it was built up by the Roosevelt family and was rebuilt using the next building over as a model. So this building isn't the original building, but it's recreated in a way that it resembled the original building, the twin building next to it, and the twin building next to this building was demolished in order to make more room for the museum itself. So you see here this is a National Historic Site now. But here it is, 28 East 20th Street, the birthplace of Theodore Roosevelt, American President. So I want to walk over two blocks now, past 5th Avenue to 6th Avenue, where I'll show you some of the stores of the former Ladies Mall and what they turned into now. Ladies Mile originally encompassed uh, 28 blocks and 440 buildings from Park Avenue South to west of Avenue of the Americas. That's the, that's the official name of 6th Avenue, although most people don't call it Avenue of the Americas. The most famous department stores of the area include B. Altman, Best & Company, Arnold Constable, Bergdorf Goodman, which is still around on 5th Avenue, Gorham Silver, W. & J. Sloan, Lord and Taylor, Taylor. I stumbled there because I still lament the loss of Lord & Taylor on 5th Avenue and Tiffany & Company. There are also upscale restaurants in this area and booksellers and also piano manuf manufacturers such as the Solar Piano Company. There's also major um, cultural institutions here as well. The Academy of Music and Steinway Hall and the first location of the Metropolitan Museum of Art was here as well. This brought a lot of celebrities here Many of them include Ethel Barrymore, Isabella Stewart Gardner, Lily Langtree, and Lillian Russell.
So here's Fifth Avenue. You can see a lot of the old buildings here and also the modern Empire State Building. Cyclists going through a red light without the right of way. There's New Balance, the athletic uh, wear company. Wow, there's a lot of uh, scaffolding here. They must doing some be doing some serious building work here. Sometimes many of these property owners find it uh, less expensive to maintain the scaffolding than it is to make repairs on the building itself. So the scaffolding stays up indefinitely, but this was all due to laws to protect, protect pedestrian safety. Take a look at some of these um, columns here. They have like fruits on them and looks almost Greek. Now there's a lot of clubs here as well, VIP club. Here's LV Wood, very fancy um, furniture store. Mod shop, ooh. And this is a um, shadow box facility. Retail space for lease if anybody's interested. Set shop, photo surfaces and set supplies. Interesting. Here's the location for the New York Public Library in Flatiron. Now that I've approached uh, 6th Avenue, I can tell you some of the retailers that are along this stretch of 6th Avenue now. You have Trader Joe's, Bed Bath & Beyond, Marshall's, Gap, Banana Republic, uh, Old Navy's here as well. There's also a TJ Maxx here. There's also the art supply store, Blick. This building is also very historic, this church. I forget the name of it, but I know it's been here for a long time. But this I would call like the centerpiece of Ladies Mile, this stretch of 6th Avenue here. I'll just walk down it to 14th Street. Men's warehouses here. They have their um, windows already set up for the holidays too. They have the trees up and the presents, enticing people to go in there and shop. Mm -hmm. 
Here's CVS Pharmacy. And this is the, um, the group of stores I was telling you about here on uh, 6th Avenue and 19th Street. TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Bed Bath & Beyond. Also, Bed Bath & Beyond has a cafe here. Cafe Beyond is the name. Very fitting name. You have the container store across the street now. Looks like this building was built in 1896. It has a the year in the front there. There across the street is Modell's and a Chase Bank and Old Navy. Currently they have a 50% sale for the holidays on all outerwear, jeans, pants and sweaters. I do wonder how the retailers will fare this holiday season. This holiday season is going to be short because Thanksgiving lies on the 28th this year of November. So that gives a fewer, uh, fewer um, shorter time span for the retailers to sell all their goods in time for Christmas and the holidays. And tell you you have some bold pedestrians who think they are across the street without getting hit by vehicles, but it's always more prudent to wait a few seconds than risk getting hit by a vehicle and then spending your week in the hospital. I think that's a better trade-off. It's unfortunate that a lot of people don't see it that way though. Here's Coffee D, very good um, coffee place and beverage place. They have several locations around the city as well and in Queens. Alright, this is pretty much the entire Ladies Mile District. Think Coffee is another great spot for coffee. Even though I don't drink it, but I know a lot of people will go there.
All right, everyone, I'm approaching 14th Street right now. This concludes it for my walk of the Flatiron District. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below and give this video a like. I'll catch you all next time and stay warm. Take it easy.